We wanted to think if we can use other type of substrates instead of uh, aldehydes, uh, instead of conjugate aldehydes. So we went back, we knew it worked very well in dual solder type reactions. We went back to look at what you can do with dual solder reactions. Of course, one of the most trivial reactions that everybody have done in undergrad class, lab class, is the untrusted in dual solder reaction. Uh, it works uh, uh, because you have, you gain, uh, you gain from, uh, from the untrusting starting material following the Clar rule, you have only one benzene-alike structures conjugated to four uh, double bonds. However, in the product, you have two benzene-alike structures. So the ratio of benzene-alike pi sextet to the number of ring is increased, and that gives you a more thermodynamically stable product. However, you always have a high energetic barrier associated with de-aromatization uh, of the central B ring, which usually requires prolonged heating in a closed vice vessel, or you can use stoichiometric or sometimes catalytic amount of Lewis acid to activate your, uh, your dienophile, and you will be able to get these type of product. But it's very difficult to do an anti-selectivity. There was maybe one or two reports doing this uh, and always using either DNA type catalyst, RNA type catalyst, or metal catalyst using LUMU lowering activation of this, uh, of the dienophiles. What we thought was pretty trivial. What if we add on the anthracene a handle, molecular handle that the catalyst can recognize? If we do that, maybe by the condensation you will form an activated pi system. This conjugation will activate this system and you will be able to have to do an anti-selective uh, anthracene dual solder reaction. Of course, you need to have this handle for the catalyst to condense on. So that is a limitation, structural limitation. And, and you always have the problem of alpha reactivity towards epsilon reactivity. But uh, we showed that it was possible and they can actually do reactions at room temperature or below and you can do enantioselective reactions at low catalyst loadings. So the first approach we did was using this model structure together with nitrostyrene, a known very good dienophile or electrophilic species. It's also known to coordinate very well to uh, hydrogen bond donors. We used this uh, recently developed uh, bifunctional amino catalyst because we wanted the catalyst to activate the pi system over here, at the same time aligning the nitrostyrene for approach towards the, the aromatic system. And just me, let me remind you that these type of substrate, anthracene, they have a high degree of symmetry. It's actually more difficult to work with this. It's, you have four different approaches to the ring by the dienophile. By shielding one phase, so by shielding one road all out of the fork road, you will form racemic product because if you have the dienophile approaching from this side or from this side um, or this face or this face, you will form opposite enantiomers of products. So basically you have to be able to do bifacial selectivity. You have to direct this group to one out of four quadrants uh, above the aromatic rings. That adds a layer of complexity and, and, uh, and challenge to this type of reaction. And this is why we were using this uh, catalyst, bifunctional catalyst in the first place. And we were able to generate these products in high to excellent yields and often very good EEs. And the catalyst loading was down to 2%, usually it's 2 to 5, only in the case when you put the electron withdrawing group down here, then you need to go up to 20 mole percent. But room temperature reactions uh, within hours and you will have this, this nice result. And I believe this is also one of the first cases of, of you, the use of homo-raising type of activation for doing anthracene dual solder reaction. Now, I talked about the challenge of anthracene dual solder reaction due to the fact that you have the four quadrants to control uh, and blocking one phase will not give you uh, a good selectivity. In fact, it might give you a racemic mixture depending on how your dienophile approached aromatic ring. The idea was in the, in the following project was what if we have electrophiles which are not that good recognized by the hydrogen bonding catalyst. How do we target those type of systems? And the idea was, can we maybe target 
make a cross diagonal blockage. Instead of blocking one face over here, what if we block diagonally? So this one and this one, because leave, if you leave these two uh, places vacant, they will now go into the same enantiomeric product. And this will probably not work, at least in our initial design, with a, the polynol type catalyst. It will shield maybe one, maybe two, but not diagonally. What we thought was maybe if you combat, can you maybe combat the symmetry of anthracene systems with additional layer of symmetry by using C2 symmetric catalyst? Maybe that will give you the diagonal blockage that we were talking about. Um, and the reaction works very well. It works by using amino catalysis, no matter which type of catalyst, the reaction always works, even at minus 30 degrees. The anthracene dissolved that proceeds within a couple hours. At room temperature, within half an hour's time, mostly. So it really shows the, the condensation of the amine activates the pi system towards reaction, toward the reaction. And I told you, if you use the hydrogen bonding catalyst, you have high conversion but only 14% EE. So it's not able to recognize the malate amide uh, and point it to the quadrant of interest. We went over to this normal catalyst. This is how much, the number over here is much higher than we expected because I told you earlier that we, this might be able to shield one, maybe two quadrant, but not diagonally. I will come back to why this happens later but if you go for a C2 symmetric catalyst, you will be able to go up to 86% at room temperature, minus 30, you'll go up to 92% EE. And we showed that you can do it for a wide range, a, couple, I mean, a wide range of anthracenes and different type of malic amides or anhydrides, only in the case where you put different groups at these two rings, then the EE starts to drop. Uh, but it shows the principle that you can use C2 symmetric catalyst to work with dienophile, which are not very well recognized by hydrogen donor, species, uh, hydrogen donor type catalysts. Now, let us just go into looking at how these type of things works. And let us take the activation, why this type of activation works. Uh, we had a colleague, which is now working in, in the University of Manitoba in Canada. Uh, she helped us look at these systems by computational uh, chemistry. And the first thing she did was she was looking at the aromaticity of the central ring. At the degree of aromaticity, you can, you can quantify by something called Nix value, which is a magnetic probe, computational magnetic probe of the degree of aromaticity. And more negative means more aromatic, and positive value means anti-aromatic. And if you compare structures one, two, and three, and look at the, the numbers in red, which is the next one values of the central B ring, you see that the number goes from minus 34 to less negative values. So basically, you decrease the magnetic properties uh, of the central ring. That means reducing the, uh, reducing the aromatic character of the central ring. If you look at the HOMO, you also see the HOMO value is, uh, is higher for this type of structure. And if you calculate the reaction with nitrostyrenes, the activation barrier is, of course, as a result, also higher. This is not a prediction. This is simply just a validation using computational chemistry of our result, that everything fits in the way that it really activates um, the central ring by having a group like this. Now, let's talk a bit about um, the way it induces stereochemistry. Um, I talked a bit about that we wanted to have diagonal blockage and so on. This was our attempt. However, this is not the result when you look at it from a computational perspective where we really is able to study how the system works. Actually, one phase is completely blocked. It's much higher energy than the, the other phase. And there are not much steric blockage of either, of either approach. The thing is, if your dienophile approaches from one side, due to some clashes with the proton over here, sitting over here, this will push the enamine more into conjugation with the plane. And that results in an activation of the plane because when you have the enamine more into conjugation of the plane, due to, for example, the uh, steric um, clash between the proton over here and the proton situated this carbon, you distort the planarity of the anthracene ring. And thereby you, you deactivate or you activate uh, the central ring for, towards reaction. If, 
your antracene comes over from the other side, then the catalyst is able to avoid the, the dienophile via another conformation, and then you will not have the same degree of activation, you will not have the same degree of conjugation of this enamine species with the planar, the planar anthracene ring, and you will not have the same level of activation. So this is basically this di dihedral angle that I show over here, which is this, this one over here. And the difference is 17 degrees in dihedral angle, and that is the thing that really gives you the difference in activation barrier, which is around 1.3 kcals using this level of theory. And you see, this is the carbon, this is one of the carbonyls, and you have, a, you have a interactions over here with this proton, wherever, in, through the other way, you do not have this interaction. Uh, and the dihedral angle of interest is over here. So I call this a marginal gains. It's a really small thing. It's not a big steric block. It's not a giant callus blocking one face like in the enamine case. It is one group and one small proton, the, the, the clash that leads to the callus want to adopt a more favorable conformation, avoiding this clash, and that will push the enamine through conjugation, and this conjugation of the enamine with the central ring deactiv uh, deactivates the aromaticity and thereby uh, activates the compound towards the ozolder type reaction, and that will give you the reaction. It's a minor thing that in the cascade way leads you to the final result, which is this 1.3 kcals. Uh, indifference in activation energy and the 90% EE that you will show pure experimentally. Now what about trinamine type chemistry? What about the mechanism and what about the remote control of trinamine type chemistry? Um, it should be a bit sim easier than the anthracene system but it's still difficult to think because you have so many different ways the dienophil can approach. Does it really go through the S cis conformation or so on. I mean, based on the model of the trinocalis bound trinamine, where you have the diene, diene species down here, see that this guy blocks the beta position very well. It's a minimum type chemistry. It, be, uh, it blocks this uh, position very well. But over here, you do not have that great uh, blockage. So the initial proposal for mechanism that we back in, I think, 2010-11, was we believe it was really a concerted asynchronous still sold reaction because we did not observe any intermediates in the reaction mixture, only starting material, trinamine, callus bound trinamine, and product, and nothing else. So we thought maybe be due to the formation, simultaneous formation of two bonds, one bond at this position and one bond at this position, and of course this position is well shielded. So basically the steric shielding of the callus on this position is relayed to the more remote position due to the simultaneous formation of two bonds. Yeah? This was our initial, uh, initial proposal for the, for the type of chemistry. And then we were thinking, okay, the Zolder type reaction, concerted cycloadditions. First, of course, we want to maximize overall uh, orbital overlaps and by having a, a, a unsymmetric diene and a unsymmetric and polarized dienophiles, you should this should be your most reasonable regioisomer of product, and we only observe the endo product, so we're talking about secondary orbital interactions, uh, favor giving you the normal endo rule of, uh, of dual solder type reaction. So this was our initial proposal together with, together with the first reaction, and uh, basically concerted reactions. However, upon some different um, upon some, some more study of the system and going into the DFT calculation and looking at how the system works, we soon found out that it's not concerted reaction. You ha it's a stepwise type reaction because you can see intermediates were mapping the potential energetic surface. Uh, and the problem is when it's not the concerted reaction, orbital and secondary orbital interactions is, out, is ruled out, and you have to look at a, a, a set of different other type of parameters. Um, this is um, a reaction that I, am, uh, I monitored uh, or I, I computed, the Saudios all the reaction. We calculated different pathways uh, of how the diene file and, uh, and this truncated uh, triene can engage with, with each other. I will just show you the most favorable pathways. Basically, you will form a Twitter stable Twitter ionic species on the potential energy surface, a very shallow, uh, a very shallow 
intermediate, you can also find a concerted reaction, but concerted reaction has much higher transition state energy, which uh, will not be able to, to perform due in the reaction setup that we have. So it goes through the stepwise mechanism forming your Twitter ionic species, followed by a very uh, low barrier towards the first second cyclization, and final product is, of course, thermodynamically more stable. And uh, overall, an exothermic reaction and the first reaction step is uh, the rate determining. Mm -hmm.